The first known Cabrillo Festival was held on September 28, 1892. A second was held in 1894. The headlines in the San Diego Union newspaper reported, San Diego presented a gala appearance yesterday afternoon. Nearly all of the business houses and many residents were tastefully decorated in honor of the Cabrillo celebration. In 1964, the Cabrillo Festival takes shape and the Cabrillo Festival is formed. Prior to those years, the, the local Portuguese, uh, in particular the Portuguese American Social Civic Club, the Cabrillo Club number 16, always celebrated Cabrillo uh, Day. In 1978, a gentleman named Nico Saad, which was a very good friend of um, or present in Maris in the heart and soul of the Cabrillo Festival, Mary Giglito started the Cabrillo Festival in Ensenada. Uh, in 1979, the, the Spanish uh, Casa de España started becoming a, a, a member of the Cabrillo Festival board. As far as I know, the first Cabrillo Festival or Cabrillo related event in San Diego was 1892 when they, uh, inspired by the Columbian Exposition in 1890 or Chicago World's Fair, some people call it, there was many fairs like that and they wanted to take advantage of it and promote it in San Diego. And San Diego promoted it absolutely fully. They went into debt. They had fully a third of the entire population of the city, which would be over half a million nowadays, uh, actually go down to the end of Broadway, which was then called D Street, to attend it. And they covered the buildings, uh, they were festooned with banners and they had bands and it was, a, it was such a big crowd that they actually collapsed part of the pier at the end of Broadway and uh, they had to postpone it while everybody got cleaned up. But Manuel Cabral, who at the time was considered the kind of the king of the Portuguese colony here, uh, was the person who enacted, was the first portrayer of Cabrillo here. The Cabrillo Festival has been consistently celebrated in San Diego since 1964. In 1964, the San Diego Junior Chamber of Commerce sponsored the festival. Prior to the formalization of the committee as we know it today, the Portuguese community, under the leadership of the Portuguese American Social and Civic Club and the Cabrillo Civic Club No. 16, used to celebrate it on September 28th. Then in 1964, Cabrillo Festival, Inc. started. We started an, uh, having our reenactment on Shelter Island, and that went all the way through until 2004. Then from there, we moved up to Cabrillo National Monument and had a lovely festival from 88 until about 2004. And after that, we had uh, some connections with um, the United States Navy and negotiated to actually have the festival on the Naval Base Point Loma, and we've been there since 2005. Uh, lovely access to a uh, naval base, which doesn't usually happen. From the beginning, the Cabrillo Festival was the creation of the Portuguese community with the strong support of the National Park Service staff at the Cabrillo National Monument under the leadership of Tom Tucker and the Cabrillo Historical Association. Got involved with the uh, Cabrillo National Monument Foundation. I'm the current chair. And the reason uh, I did that was because of the people before us uh, that were involved and were responsible for bringing the Cabrillo uh, a statue to San Diego and setting up the story here at the park. Uh, Dutilde Varley, who was, who was the, uh, a, a local, uh, actually born in San Diego, went to live back in the Azores and Beagle, and then her parents immigrated back to San Diego again. So we've got a lot of rich history here that I try to embrace and continue to celebrate and be part of it. That's what 50 years of Cabrillo does for me, our heritage, our traditions. Uh, the festival uh, has, has somewhat been challenging. I, my predecessor, the previous superintendent, uh, finally took the festival outside the park grounds and, and then really the efforts of the community and, and of Cabrillo Festival, they uh, worked with the Navy to use uh, Ballast Point. 
It involves four nations. Portugal because João Rodrigues Cabrillo was Portuguese. Spain because he was sailing for the Kingdom of Spain. Mexico because he also stopped in Mexico on September 17, 1542. And the United States because it was the newly discovered country. Native Americans were also involved in the festival as they were the first people Cabrillo encountered. In 1978, Nico Saad of Ensenada was appointed as representative to the government of Mexico. In 1979, Spain was represented for the first time by Casa de España, a local organization. We tried to work closely together and uh, make the festival a success. We offer the paellas besides the, the dances. And I think that it's so silly at this point to start fighting. In fact, part of the reason when I came on the board was because there's been a couple of articles in the local newspaper, one in favor of Cabrillo being Spaniard, and another one saying, no, Cabrillo is Portuguese. And so kind of the two groups went public fighting with each other and saying, Cabrillo is one of ours. And I'm saying, why not say that it belongs to both? The festival consists of a historic seminar, a commemorative wreath laying, a banquet, an all-day festival at Naval Base Point Loma featuring foods, music, and dancing of the nations involved. Also a reenactment of Cabrillo's historic landing on San Diego Bay. Weekend before uh, the Cabrillo Festival and then the weekend after is the Miramar uh, open house where they have the air show and the Blue Angels. So this is sandwiched right in the middle. So timing wise, it couldn't, it, it couldn't have worked out even better. And plus the, uh, the San Salvador is gonna be the, uh, the vessel that is gonna be used uh, on Ballast Point for uh, Cabrillo when he comes to shore. So uh, everybody's excited about that as well. And then we'll have the, uh, the Cabrillo Festival coming up that next weekend. So we'll be on TV and uh, pushing that on all uh, local TV and radio. Outside, the County of San Diego, City of San Diego, uh, and this year in particular, a very strong donor, Toyota, it's been 95% financed by the Portuguese. The fact is that without the Portuguese, the Cabrillo Festival would never have been happened. Cabrillo would probably would never been as recognized as it is today. The Cabrillo Festival is unique because of its ethnic celebration that has been recognized by three presidents of the United States, Nixon, Carter, and Reagan. It involves four nations standing side by side with no walls, no barriers. The Cabrillo Festival has had the support along the years with the military. The Portuguese military has been uh, marked their presence to the Cabrillo Festival and having a scholarship for the Queen. And they really has been probably the connection of the Portuguese connection to our festival. It's the most important connection that we've had along the years. Here locally, we have the military connection and support, which is the submarine base. Uh, the base is not open any part of the year, but just for the Cabrillo Festival. The late Cabrillo Festival Incorporated president, Emerita Mary Rosa Giglito, was the heart and soul of the festival since the 1960s. She made contacts with heads of state from other nations involved, and the Cabrillo Festival is now recognized as an international festival. It was so natural for me, every festival, to dance with the Spaniards and the Portuguese at the same time. So I'd be running back and forth, changing costumes. But really, I, when I saw the work that my mother did, and the pride, and little, as a, from a little girl, my memories of since five years old of Kerbyl Festival, it just seemed natural that I would participate first as a vice president and then later as president. Every year, Miss Cabrillo Festival is elected at a pageant sponsored by Cabrillo Civic Club No. 16, San Diego, and the Portuguese American Social and Civic Club of San Diego. And also it was the boom of what was happening for the Portuguese community with the tuna industry. Um, there was a big interest with, with the Portuguese government as well. It was a huge thing at that time in 1969. 
It was a little nerve wracking too, especially when I was meeting these dignitaries, you know, and uh, going to lunches and which fork do I use, you know, things like that. But at the end of the day, you kind of just soak it in and try to take lots of pictures and um, it's very humbling and also a really good feeling too when you see if you stay involved. It was something unforgettable. I got to go places and meet people that I would have never been able to do. We got to go to Parliament. I, I st have a picture of myself standing there with one of the senators and just in Parliament. I mean, just seeing their government, seeing where I came from, um, touring different places that I would have never gone as a normal tourist. Well, it's been going on for 52 years and I'm just really excited to be a part of this um, Portuguese legacy that's been going on for so, for so long. The gentleman on the front of the float depicted there is Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo, an explorer from... One of the most visible participations of members of the Cabrillo Festival was in the 2008 Tournament of Roses Parade in Pasadena. The Rose Roll Parade was uh, actually one of the exciting things that uh, I will forever remember. So I had actually people asking me who I was, what I was, because um, not too many of them other than, you know, like police officers and stuff have real weapons. And I was walking around with a, a real sword and going actually in the parade and, and uh, turning that corner, they call it the TV corner, and seeing, you know, the thousands of people in the stands and then just laughing when after we passed the cameras that our float broke down. <laughs> In 1939, the Portuguese government commissioned a heroic statue of Cabrillo and donated it to the United States. In the 1940s, the original statue moved on to San Diego. As time rolled on, the statue started to deteriorate, and in the 80s, it was replaced with the current one. That also came from Portugal, and it can be seen in the Cabrillo National Monument. Uh, San Diego uh, was discovered in 1542, and in the American history, you know, the Americans, they say, oh, the uh, Pl Plymouth, Plymouth Rock and the Mayflower uh, that came from England was, you know, started this country. Well, we're talking about 78 years before that, Cabrillo discovered San Diego. So San Diego should be bigger than uh, Plymouth uh, Rock you know, on the East Coast. And we owe all of this and this beautiful uh, Cabrillo Festival to the Portuguese that started that. Long, long before the pilgrims were setting foot on the rock uh, in Plymouth. So it's remarkable the extent of the navigational knowledge, the, uh, the sophistication of the charts and the ability for uh, Portuguese to explore just huge swaths of the, uh, uh, the world. It was, it's really quite inspiring. It's a fascinating story to uh, delve into. Well, in my view, it's a way of integrating a story. You know, uh, what, we're, what we're poised to do is say that that uh, arrival of Carrillo on September 28, 1542 was an American origin story in similar fashion to the Mayflower on the East Coast in Massachusetts and the Jamestown ships in Virginia. So over the years, that story, and particularly its reenactment, has continued to be at the forefront of our iconography and our understanding of who we are and where we came from. In moving forward, the goal of the festival is to research in depth Joel Rodriguez Cabrillo's identity and to expand at a state level.